Hey up everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well and you're looking after yourself. Today's video is going to be my second rivalry video, part two of me and RL rivalry videos, where I go in depth with some of the biggest rivalries in the league. And I describe the rivalry going right back from the start and to present day. Last night I did South Sydney versus Eastern Suburbs and that got a lot of positive feedback. And tonight I'm going to be doing Canterbury Bankstown against Parramatta. Now people have considered this rivalry, rivalry to be one of the biggest rivalries in the league. I certainly think as a Parramatta fan that Canterbury Bankstown are our biggest rivals, our arch rivals. It's a game I always, I always look forward to. It's a game that I want to win more than any other. So tonight I'm going to be going in depth with this rivalry. Before I start the video I'd just like to thank all my new subscribers. Today, I think two or three new people subscribed to the channel, so welcome on board and thank you to everyone that supported the channel from the very beginning. So, I just want to thank you all very much for all your kind words, your support, and um, your ongoing um, liking of the channel. So, Parramatta versus Canterbury Bankstown. When you hear of this rivalry, especially in the media, if you, if you watch Channel 9, Fox League, Fox Sports, they'll see this rivalry began in the 80s. Wrong. It didn't begin in the 80s. I've got family members that have been supporting Parramatta ever since the 1940s, 50s, 60s, 70s. And they said even back in those days, the matches between Calgary Bankstown and Parramatta were always hidden, always spiteful. Lots of feeling between the two sets of uh, clubs and supporters. You have to understand as well that geographically the Parramatta and Canary districts actually touch against each other. It's similar to South Sydney and Eastern Suburbs where there's certain uh, places where they're right on the border between both districts. So, for example, you've got um, a suburb called Auburn, which is just down the road from Parramatta, but that's in Canterbury Bankstown's district now. And more recently, Parramatta, uh, which is in Parramatta's district, is now converted over to become a Canterbury Bankstown district. So you've got a, a very close geographical relationship between the two clubs. Now, head to head, so this is going from 1947, because Canterbury was founded in 1935, Parramatta in 1947. Head to head, Parramatta's won 68 matches, Canterbury 84, and there's been six draws. The first meeting that they ever had between each other was on May the 10th, 1947 at Belmore Oval, where Canterbury Bankstown won 35 points to 15. Now, in the early days, Parramatta weren't good at all. We come last 11 times between 1947 and 1972. And Canary Bankstown as well had a very poor 1950s. They need one grand final in the 1960s, but for both clubs, both those decades weren't particularly great. The first time that they actually met in the finals match wasn't until 1975 when Parramatta beat Canterbury six points to five. Canterbury had just made the grand final a year before, so Parramatta knocked them out of the competition and made it to the preliminary final. Fast forward to 1978, and Canterbury Bankstown got their revenge on Parramatta. They ended up winning the match. It was a major semi-final. They ended up winning 22 points to 15. The following year, Parramatta and Canterbury met in the preliminary final for a spot in the grand final. And on that occasion, uh, it was won by Parramatta. No, sorry. No, it was won by Canterbury Bankstown, yeah. It was won by Canterbury Bankstown. They won 20 points to 14. And they ended up playing in the grand final against St George, which, which they lost. Then we move on to 1983. In another preliminary final between the two clubs. And on this occasion Parramatta got their, got their revenge on Canterbury winning 18 points to 4. Parramatta went on to win the Premiership next the, the following week which was their third Premiership in a row. 
Then we go to the following year, 1984, the two clubs meet and they faced grand final against each other. Canterbury went on to win that match six points to four, stopping Parramatta's chance at four in a row. Parramatta had a chance to actually win this match lead on. Um, it was six points to four. Mick Cronin, our goal kicker, had a chance to win the match rules or send it into extra time. And he's penalty goal missed and Canterbury banks down no longer the win. The following year, 1985, the two clubs met yet again. On this occasion, Canterbury won 26 points to nil. So probably one of Parramatta's worst defeats in the 1980s, especially the early 80s. Uh, Canterbury went on the next week to win the Premiership against St George. 1986, so yet another year where the two clubs meet this time. It was in the 1986 Grand Final. It was the only trialless Grand Final in the history of the game so far. Who knows, maybe it might happen in the future. But in the 1986 Grand Final, the, the final score was 4 points to 2 to Parramatta. And as of 2020, it's Parramatta's last Premiership. So it's been 34 long years for us. Then Parramatta went through a period of decline where Canterbury maintained the same type of level and it wasn't until 1993 that another major incident happened and this time it was on what they called multicultural D at Belmore Oval. Uh, the match attracted 27,000 people to Belmore Oval considering that the ground officially only holds 20,000 so now they managed to cram another 7,000 people in there and Canterbury inflicted one of Parramatta's worst ever defeats on them in terms of this rivalry when, when uh, Canterbury beat Parramatta 42 points to 6 and this was also Brett Kenny's last year as a Parramatta player so um, it wasn't a particularly, a particularly good day for Parramatta that day Canterbury ran riot and he smashed those then in 1996, so during the Super League War, or at the beginning of the Super League War, there was four Canterbury players that had uh, disputes with the club because the club had signed the Super League. And in amongst all that, Parramatta managed to sign all four of these Canterbury players, known as the Canterbury Four, Jared McCracken, Jason Smith, Dean P, and Jim Dimmick. Um, those four players helped Parramatta uh, resage up the table in the next coming years we ended up making a few preliminary finals we ended up becoming the finals team again after the inclusion of these four players and one of them Dean Pay, he ended up captaining the club so uh, Canterbury were, would obviously be really really annoyed with the fact that these four players ended up going to their arch rivals but um, I think even though that they were Canterbury players, uh, especially with a couple of them, Jason Smith, Dean P, they ended up becoming some of my favourite players at Parramatta, funnily enough. Then we come to one of the biggest matches between the two clubs, one of the most infamous. The 1998 preliminary final at the Sydney Football Stadium. Parramatta come third that year. They upset Brisbane to get the week off. And Canterbury had to win three sudden death matches just to make the preliminary final. With 10 minutes to go, Parramatta were winning 18 points to two. And then Canterbury come back in the last 10 minutes, scored three tries in about eight minutes. Halligan converted from the sideline. Edie Nall sent it in extra time. Enna Paul Cavage and Canterbury just aged home. They ended up winning 32 points to 20. In what is my opinion the biggest ever comeback in rugby league history, especially when it comes to finals, and I don't think you'll ever see a, a finals game like that ever again, especially a comeback like that. Then we flash forward to 2005. Uh, Parramatta and Canterbury played at Parramatta Stadium that year. Canterbury missed the finals, Parramatta were the minor premiers. And we played Canterbury towards the end of the season and we beat them 56 points to 4 at Parramatta Stadium. The match is remembered for Mark Riddell scoring a try and doing a break dance or some sort of a funny dance at the end of it to humiliate Canterbury. 
and also to monitor who he scored a try. I think he scored a hat trick in that game, and when he came back for his for his third try, he slam dunked the ball over the crossbar like he would in a basketball match. So it was all the humiliation for Canterbury. I think it's the biggest ever victory we've ever had ever had over him, and um, I think it was sweet revenge for 1998, as far as I'm concerned. Then we go on to 2007. There was two important matches in this year. Round 21, we played against Canterbury at the Olympic Stadium, and Canterbury played Brad Morgan. Bit one of our players, Tamara Tartu, on the arm, like a vampire. And that sparked an all-in brawl. Parramatta ended up winning that match, and Brad Morgan was suspended, I think, for four to eight weeks for that. And then in the semi-final, Parramatta played Canterbury at the Olympic Stadium again in front of 50,000 fans. This was the first finals match that we played against them since that 1998 uh, preliminary final. In the match, it was tense early on, and then Sonny Bill Williams tried a shoulder charge on Ethan Heimarsh. It didn't come off. He popped his shoulder out, he was taken off the field. And we ended up storming home, winning 25 points to 6 to book a preliminary final against Melbourne. In 2008, the two clubs played each other in a dead rubber match, but with a bit of spice in it. Parramatta failed to meet the finals that year, but Canterbury were in danger of coming last, getting the wooden spoon. And I remember I was at this game, and we beat Canterbury pretty convincingly in that match and we all but confirmed our arch rivals to the wooden spoon that year so I remember leaving that that uh, game very very happy with with uh, how Parramatta were playing and I was dead I was dead happy that Canterbury finished with the wooden spoon then we move on to 2009 so that year Parramatta went on that amazing run to the grand final uh, on the back of Jared Heen and some of the other players Canterbury finished second on the table after finishing Wooden Spooners in 2008. They resaved up the table. The two teams met each other in the preliminary final at the Olympic Stadium in front of a non-grand final record crowd of 74,000. I've never seen an atmosphere at a game like this except grand finals. The, the atmosphere was incredible from both sets of supporters. It was like a European atmosphere. You had Parramatta fans split on one side of the stadium, Canterbury uh, fans split on the other side of the stadium. It was an exciting game. Canterbury were in control early on until Parramatta saved home in the second half and booked a place in the 2009 Grand Final. Uh, Canterbury went into that game as, as favourites despite Parramatta with that resurgence, but it was a, one of the best games that I've ever, I've ever watched as a Parramatta fan and it's one of my all-time favourite games. Then we go on to 2011. So this was another spiteful clash between the two clubs. In the same match, uh, Canterbury player Corey Payne head-butted Jared Hain, Rhymes, in the in the end, sparked an all-in all brawl. Uh, I think both players were sent to the sin bin for that. Power Battle were leading 14-0 in that game before that, mind you. Then, in the second half, when Canterbury were getting on top, Michael Ennis said something to Nathan Einmarsh. Nathan Einmarsh wasn't a player that would ever react or, or do out daft, you know. He, he never got sinbin. Whatever Mick Ennis said to, to Nathan Einmarsh, he ran back, he had a bit of a push and shove, all that keeper. After the match, Nathan Heimarsh come out and called Ennis a fucking grub. So, some very spiteful words there after that match. Ever since then, it's kind of been tit for tat between the two clubs. We haven't played each other in a finals match since 2009. I'd, I'd see for the most part, it's been, you know, Canterbury will win a couple of games, will win a couple of games, but there's still plenty of feeling there. If you watch the game this year, the opening round, even though it was a lot a low scoring match, some of the tackles, some of the hits were really strong. There was plenty of feeling, plenty of emotion. And I look forward to the future when hopefully Parramatta and Canterbury play each other in another finals match because it's good for the game, it's good for the television ratings, it's good for the fans. 
and uh, I think from a neutral point of view it's, it's a good game to watch. Another thing I will add to the rivalry as well is some of the comments from some recent players that have played in, in the rivalry. So one player, James Graham, he actually said of the rivalry, and this is something that I can quote, he said, as soon as I come to this club, I was told that there was no other club closer to the woods than Parramatta. And there was no love betro- no lo- love lost between the players and the fans. And Andrew Ryan, who played for both clubs, he said, both clubs speak about the rivalry in the change room and leading into the clashes. They always want to get the wood on their rival. I went for Canterbury when I was a kid, but when I got my first opportunity to play first grade, it was with Parramatta. They place a huge amount of emphasis on this game and winning it. I think I was one of the only players to go the other way. A lot of players who have played for the, for Canterbury go to Parramatta, but not the other way around. So, that's me, Parramatta, Canterbury rivalry, in depth, going back from 1947 to when the clubs first met until present day. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. If you really enjoyed it, please consider sharing it with your friends, family, colleagues. Get their opinion on it. Let me know if I've missed anything in the rivalry. I think I've covered and covered all the bases, but maybe I've missed some. And if you've got some spare time, go over to Rugby League History. That's my Facebook page. I'll put a link in the description below. But as always, take care of yourselves, everyone. I'll catch us all later. And ta-ra.